Okay, so today, lesson six, forget the number, that's all out now anyway. So we're going to factor third degree polynomials using the cube of a binomial. So cube of a binomial means something like 3x plus 2 cubed, anything to power 3. And the binomial means there are two parts. So we'll do that in a minute. But probably we should review first about the perfect square binomial. So if you recall the formula, a plus b all squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. All right. And then if it's subtraction, a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Like that. So one thing you can note about the powers which will be important for today. Look at the a squared. You've got a squared, then it becomes a, a power one. Here, this is b power one, but it becomes b power two. So we kind of see this pattern when we do um, cubes. Also, a squared, a one. This is actually an a power zero here, isn't there? Because remember, anything to power zero equals one. So I could actually write a power zero on the end here. So a2, a1, a0. And also the same for b, b2, b1. I could actually write b power zero here. But we never write them because they're equal to one anyway. You're going to see this idea in cubes when we do the cubes. So as an example, if you wanted to factorize x squared plus 4x plus 4, we write it in this form. So a, x squared plus 2, x2 two plus 2 squared. Remember the x here is here, and the 2 there is there. And 2 squared is 4, and x squared is x squared. You've done this already. So if you did the homework, you'd actually know how to do this already. So in this case, 4x squared is 2x all squared. The 9 is 3 squared. And this number is written here, 2x, 2x. And the 3 is written there, 3, 3. And then we need to check this term is the same as the middle term there. 2, 2 is a 4, 4, 3 is a 12. So we're OK. So that means you can actually write it as, as a power two, not cube. We'll do that in a minute. So two X minus three all squared. And if you expand it, you'll get, you'll get back to your expression here. So as an example, um, just review, because this will help you for homework. So we could write that in the form A squared minus two A B plus b squared like that. So x squared minus 2 times x times 3 plus 3 squared. Just check they all match up. x, x, 3, 3 like that. And just check the middle term is minus 6. So minus 2 times 3 is minus 6x. It's OK. That means you can write it in the form x minus 3 all squared, because that's equal to a minus b all squared, like that. OK, so the next one, x squared. And you've got 49, which you know is 7 squared. So let's just write them first. 49 is 7 squared. So let's check. We've got x squared plus two, you always write two, and we've got plus here. So we use plus, plus two times x times seven, plus seven squared. So that seven comes from here. So check their equal, seven, seven, x, x, 
okay? And two times seven is 14, which means you can write it in the form, x plus seven all squared. Okay, this one, x squared minus 10x plus 25. So that's x squared. This is five squared. So we have what A and B would be. So we'll have x squared minus two x five plus five squared. Check they all match up, five, five x x two fives so at 10x minus 10x looks okay so then we can write x minus five all squared like that so this is just a review from last week so i think most of you probably know it okay so this is 4x squared so you should write that as 2x all squared the one is one squared so we have what is a and b so this is actually a, 2x, and b equals 1 from the formula. So we would write out 2x squared plus 2 times 2x times the last term, which is 1, plus 1 squared. So 2x is here one is here. So it looks like we have two X plus one all squared. Like that, you can expand and check yourself and check the middle term should be equal to this term. If it's not, this method doesn't work. So if this was five and not four, then you can't write your final answer like that. It's gotta be four. So this term here should be equal to this one here. Two twos are four, four X. Okay, so it's all right. So we can write the answer like that as a perfect square. So question five, nine X squared is three X all squared. So A is three X. In this case, 16 is four squared. So B would be four from the formula. So we're gonna have three X all squared minus two, put a two in, three X first, and then four, and then four squared like that. And so the middle term should be equal to this. Notice I didn't even talk about this minus 24. I only used this based on the formula. So now you need to check these are equal. Two threes are six, six fours are 24, negative 24, it's okay. So that means you can write the answer as A plus A minus B squared. So that would be three X minus two. So minus four squared like that. And you can expand it and check your answer like that. I had to make a correction on your sheet. This should be 24, not 12. You see that number? So you can fix that on your tablet if you have your tablet. So the 9a squared, we should change to be 3a all squared. The 16b squared is 4b all squared. So that means that a is 3A and B is 4B. So we use our formula. So we'll have 3A all squared plus two times 3A times 4B, the last term, plus the last term squared. So just check everything is the same. So 9a squared, okay. 4b all squared, 16b squared, okay. Check the middle term is the same. Two threes are six, six fours are 24. A, B. So everything is the same. 
So these are actually equal. So if it's in this form, then you can write it as 3a plus 4b all squared like that and expand if you like and check. So I'm just really using the general form, which was a plus b all squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared like that. But when we come to our binomial now, we have something similar to this. Notice how the powers changed, a2, a1, and b1, b2. And there's some number written here. There's a two in this case. But when we come to cubics, it's similar but different. So in this section, we want to expand. I'm not going to do every one because it's quite slow. So we got x plus one cubed. So we know it's x plus one times x plus one times x plus one. So now we have three factors. Okay, so let's expand them out first. So we've got x squared, let's do that one first, x squared plus x plus one, uh, plus x again, and then plus one. That times x plus one, which is there. So this is x squared plus two x plus one times x plus one. So now we need to multiply that again. Let's go up a bit. So x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times one, x squared, 2x times x, 2x squared, 2x times 1, 2x, and then 1 times x, x, 1 times 1, 1. So we can simplify that as x cubed plus 3x squared, add the like terms, plus 3x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to rub out this working and write it back at the top. So when you do factorizing, you actually work backwards from this method. So we'll get x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay, now look at your terms. You've got x cubed, x squared, x power one, okay? And so those, those powers actually go down. And also note you have a three written here and here. So when you did the uh, square of the binomial, you actually had a two. But in this case, we've got two threes in the formula here. And in every question, this three can be written, which we need to write in actually. So let's look at some more. I need to rub that out, make some space. So let's look at question two. So 2x plus one cubed. So it's going to be 2x plus one. 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 again because it's cubed. So then we multiply the first two factors. So you get 4x squared plus 2x. 1 times 2x is 2x. 1 times 1 is 1, like that. So you're going to get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 times 2x plus 1, like that. So we'll expand this out. So 4x squared times 2x 
eight X cubed, four X squared times one, four X squared, four X times two X, eight X squared, four X times one, four X, one times two X, two X, one times one is one. So let's see what we got. So we've got eight X cubed plus 12 X squared plus six X plus one. All right, so let's erase this bit and I'll write that back up the top. You see, you don't actually have to do this in the questions later, but I'm just working forwards, but you'll need to work backwards. So you've got eight X cubed plus 12 X squared plus six X plus one. Okay. Let's erase that. Okay, so that would be finished. If I was asking you to expand this, that's finished, All right? But I think we'll look at how this breaks down because in the first question, we saw we had a three in these two terms here. These ones here. So I wanna see if they're actually in here as well in these middle two terms. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break this down to be eight X cubed. You know, you can write as two X all cubed, can't you? All right, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick this three into here. I'm gonna put a three here. And then we saw that this number actually goes down a power. So I'm gonna write two X squared. And this here actually can be written as one cubed. So now I'm gonna put a one in. You'll see why soon. And then I'm gonna put another three in. So I'm gonna put that three in here. And then the two X squared will become two X power one. But the one power one becomes one squared. The last term is one cubed. So you look at what happened here. So we've got two X cubed. 2x squared, 2x1, and at the end is 2x power zero, but I'm not gonna write that because that equals to one. So I should write that there somewhere. So 2x power zero equals one. That could go here, but I'm not gonna write it because it's equal to one anyway. But look what happened to the power, three, two, one. But look what happened to power on the one, power one, power two, power three, it increased in power like that. So that's actually what's happening with the powers. The first one will go down and then the second one will go up. There's a one power zero in the front here as well, but we won't write that either. So what you need to check now is that this term is equal to this one. And this term is equal to this one here. So just check that. You've got two squared, which is four, four threes are 12, good. You've got an X squared here, good, that's finished. So these are equal, this, this second term is equal. This one is two times three, which is six, and one squared is one, so that's six, good. And you've got an X power one, X power one, good. So these are equal. So if you have this form, A cubed plus three, let's write that down. So if you have the form A cubed plus three A squared, B plus three A B squared plus B 
cubed. If it looks like this, you can write it in the form A plus B, all cubed. That's your basic formula, which is what I've written here. Well, we won't do this one, but that's what you'll get. So if you check, this is A, 2X, your B is one. So that means we can write this in the form 2X plus one cubed. Now with the, div with the subtraction, if it's subtraction here, this will be minus, this will be plus, this will be minus, this will be minus. We'll do that down here. So I'm going to leave number three and four because they're done the same way. You, we would have got this formula here. Okay, we would have got this formula. And the negative one will have negative plus negative for this one. So we won't do those because we'll come across it soon. So your general form is here. So if you've got the cube and it's a sum, notice that all the signs are positive like that. If you have a negative, the first sign is negative and then they alternate negative, positive, negative. Okay, later on, I'll teach you how to find X minus B to the sixth power or some other power. And we'll learn how to do that. It's actually not that hard. We can get these numbers quite easily. There is a way to do it. So that's how the signs change, but also look at how the powers are changing. A cubed, A squared, A, A zero here. There's an A zero. But look at the B. B one. B2, B3. On here is B0, which I won't write. And the same for the cube. You've got B1, B2, B3. And then for the A, again, A cube, A squared, A1, and A0 here, like that. So they're the general forms for cubes. So the way to do these is what I do first, I look at the X cubed. So what we wanna be able to do is write this as a perfect cube like that. This is, will be your final answer. That's what we're trying to do. But we need to go through this process, which I'll show now. So we've got X cubed. So I know this is X cubed, right? 64 is four cubed. These are our key numbers here. So in our formula, A will be X and B is the second one. B will be four from this here. So B will be equal to four. These are our key numbers, X and four. So what you need to do first as your first step, so you write X cubed, but we know we're using plus, so we're using this formula here. And we know we're gonna have two threes in here in the middle two terms. See that we need to put these in now. So X cubed plus three, then you're becoming down one power, x squared, but then the four will be power one, like that, because b, b power one, and b is four, plus three again, x cubed, x squared, x power one, the four power one will become four power two, that will increase in power. Then your last term is four cubed. Okay, this, these examples are in your book, so you can just follow what's in the textbook. But if you're on the tablet, you can write them down or copy from the book. So what you need to do now is check that this term is equal to this term and that this term is equal to this term. They must be the same. 
If they're not, this you've either made a mistake or it doesn't work one way or the other. So you've got x squared, good. Four, four times three is 12, good. So this one's okay. This is four squared, which is 16. 16 times three is 48. X, X, okay, they're the same. So that means that you can write this in the form X plus four cubed as a perfect cube. If you expand that, you will get this here. Okay, but it's very important you check that these yellow and green terms are equal here. They need to be the same. All right, so that's the first example. There is a quick way to do it, but when you do your worksheet, I want to see this line here. So there should be two parts, the first bit and the second bit when you do the homework later. So we want to know what is A and B. This is question two. So if this is going to work, we'll get A and B from the first term and the last term. So that means that we've got 27A cubed. So let's make that 3A all cubed. That's the first step. And 8B cubed will be 2B all cubed. Like that. So that means that A can be 3A and B can be 2B like that. And we want to see if these are going to work or not, which means we need to check these middle terms. So we can start as 3a cubed, yes, first term. But then we know if this works, there must be a 3 here. So you write 3 because that's in the formula. And then we write 3a power 2. We reduce the power by 1. But then we need to introduce B because that's in your formula. 3A squared B and B is 2B. Then the formula has another three in it and the 3A squared will become 3A power one, decreased by one power. But now the 2B will increase by one power. So 2B squared. And then 3a1 will become 3a0, so it disappears. And 2b squared will become 2b cubed. Let's move across. So 2b all cubed, like that. So now we do our checking. So we check that 54 is here. And we check that 36ab squared is here. They should be the same. They must be the same for this to be working properly. So what do you got? You got A and B, A squared, A squared and B, okay. 54, so you've got three times three squared, which is nine times two. Two threes are six, six nines are 54, okay. So the yellow bit is the same. So then we check the blue one. So A, B squared, so A, B squared, okay. Three threes are nine times two twos are four. Three threes are nine, four nines are 36, good, same. So we're okay now. These two middle bits are the same as this side. And everything else is the same. These, these terms are the same. So that means you can write your answer in the form. 3a plus 2b all cubed. Now, where do these come from? That's just a and b. So you could get them from here, 3a, and this is 2b, the first term and the last term, because that's a plus b cubed. There, which is the same as a cubed, plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So that's a, a squared, b, a, 
B squared and B cubed there. So it can be written in this form, A plus B cubed for that one. So you'll see that in your book if you're checking your textbook now. Now this one has a common factor. So like we did before, let me check my answer key. I think it's 5z for the common factor. Okay, 5z. So if you look in your question, You've got a five here and that's not a cube number. So it tells you probably you need to factorize out something. We got Z everywhere. So we know Z is a common factor. So your common factor here will be five Z. So this will come out. So then you're gonna end up with Y cubed plus 12 Y squared plus 48y plus 64. So we want to know, is this a perfect cube? So can we write that as a plus b cubed? So we need to check this. So let's take a look, 5z. Okay, so what would be your a and b then? So it looks like your a is y. And your B here will be four because 64 is four cubed. So A is Y and B is four. So let's write that out. Y cubed, well, Y cubed is Y cubed. The formula tells us there's a three here. And then we write Y squared, decrease the power by one. Now B will come in four power one plus three, the Y will decrease one power, but the four will increase by one power. And then the B will go up by one more power like that. So we need to do some checking. We need to check these are the same and we need to check this one is the same as this here. They look okay, but let's check. So three times four is 12, y squared, y squared, okay. So this one is the same, three y, and four squared is 16, and three times 16 is 48. And there's a y here, there's a y there. So these are the same, okay? So we know everything is going to be good. We can write it in this form then. So you're going to get 5z, y plus 4, all cubed. So if it's in the correct form, we can write it as a perfect cube. That's your y there, and your 4 is there, all cubed. Expand and check if you like, but you'll get back to this expression here. So that's your answer. Okay, 5z, y plus 4, all cubed for that one. So most of today I'm gonna to be talking. So we're gonna do this more tomorrow. So you'll get a bit more practice tomorrow. The main thing is just to listen today. So on question four, let me take a look. Okay, we may not do everyone, but let's see what happens. Okay, so now you've got a negative plus negative. So it's looking like we're using this formula. So if it's gonna work, we're gonna need this formula because we have a negative in the question. So that would be a cubed minus three a squared b plus three a b squared minus B cubed. So we need to check this is the same as this, right? Which means we need to put some threes in here. So it's looking like A is going to be X from here. And this is 216. So this is 6Y 
cubed. So it's looking like B would be 6Y from the last term there. So let's see what we got. We've got X cubed minus three, X squared, introduce the next term B, which is 6Y. Then it would be plus three X power one, 6y squared, that increases the power, minus 6y cubed, like that. So that's six there. So let's see that these are the same or not. So now you're checking these. Notice I didn't even talk about these middle numbers. I'm just using the formula and writing this out. So let's check this is equal. And let's check the blue is equal here. These should be the same if we're doing things correctly. So you got six minus three minus 18. Okay. You've got X squared here. You've got a Y here. Everything's good. So now we check this term. Six squared is 36 times three, which is 108. That's good. And we've got an X and we've got a Y squared here. That's good. So that's the same. So that means you can write your final answer as X minus 6Y all cubed. So your X comes from there. Your 6Y comes from there. So the important bit is the checking. So when you're doing your working, do this step as well. Don't just write your answer down from here. You could do that, but you still need to check these middle terms are correct. Okay. So that's that one. Now this one, this would be, change your 8a cubed to 2a all cubed there and change your last term to 5b. So do that first. That's your first step. So that means that a will be 2a, b will be 5b. So let's do that here. So we've got 2a all cubed. And notice we have a minus. So we've got minus 3 from the formula. 2a squared, decrease the power. But now 5b will come in as power one plus, let's go across, plus three, 2a squared will become 2a power one, but the 5b will become power two. And then you've got negative 5b cubed, okay? So yeah, you could just write down the answer. We know it's going to be 2a minus 5b all cubed. We know that, but the point is to check this middle term because if that's not 60 and it's 59, you can't write the final answer. So we need to check this term is the same as this. And we need to check this term is the same as that. That's the big point. We need to check these two. And that was cubed. So don't just jump to here. Some student may just like to jump down to here, but see, show me the middle bit of working here. That will get you used to using the formula as well. So we got 2a cubed. Now this is going to be a squared B. So A squared B is good. We need to check this minus 60 now. So we got five times two squared is four times three. So three fourths of 12, five twelves of 60. Good. 60. And then we've got five squared is 25 times two times three. So that's 150, that's good. 
and we've got A power one, which is A, and we've got B power two, which is B. So these are equal. So we know these two expressions are equal, which means then you can write down this answer here. So it is finished now. But the important bit is to check these middle terms with this side here when you're doing your calculation. So skip that one, same idea. Okay, so for your exercise, how many minutes do we have? It's nine, 10, 10 o'clock. So we only got seven minutes. So let's do a little bit on the first one. And this is what I expect you to show me when you're doing the working. So in this question, we have all pluses. So it looks like we're gonna be using this form. So you should write your formula down for each question until you get used to doing it. So that could be written as a cubed plus three a squared b plus three a b squared plus b cubed. So write your formula first down and then you need to compare this side with this here. Okay, we need to see these are gonna be the same. So you've got y cubed. Well, according to this question, y cubed. Okay, so A would be y. And then on this side, you've got 125, which is five cubed, which means that B would be five. So they're your key numbers that you need in the formula. So we've got y cubed plus three y squared times five plus three y five squared plus five cubed like that. So I'm just using the formula and writing out your expression. So now your key you need to do, if you have a tablet, you can highlight like this. Or if you have a highlighter you can write in your book and then highlight that one. So these are the ones we want to check. So we need to check they are actually 15 and 75. So I wrote this from the formula. And now I need to check these two numbers here. So three fives are 15, yes. Y squared, yes. Five squared is 25. Three times 25 is 75, yes. And Y, yes. So everything is okay. So then your next step is to write your final answer, which will be y plus five all cubed. So these are your factors. There, so you factorized it. But you do need to check because these numbers may not be the same when you're checking. In this book, they all are. But for example, if this was 10, you can't write this, it won't work because you'll have 15 from the formula, but you only have 10 in the question. They have to match up. Okay, so be careful on that there. So you've only got five minutes, so you could try the like next one here. So I'll help you with the formula and we're gonna finish it tomorrow. Notice you have negative plus negative. If you've got negative plus plus, it won't work. You have to have alternating signs. So negative plus negative. So it looks like we have the difference formula now. A minus B cubed. So write your formula out. You should try to learn them. Okay, so A cubed minus three A squared B plus three A B squared minus b cubed. It's quite easy to remember because the powers decrease and they increase on the other term. So three, two, one, one, two, three. And you have to have three in the middle. So I recommend to write this formula down, each question, the one that's relevant to your problem, all right? So in this case, it looks like the b here, is going to be four and A is D here, 
right? So you can try that yourself for a couple of minutes and I'll write the answer out in a minute. And then we continue tomorrow and finish the questions tomorrow. So A here is D and B here will be four, four cubed is 64. And that's D cubed. Right, so do that one for a minute. Okay, so we'll do the answer, see what you got. So D cubed, no problem. So D cubed, we start off with the three from the formula. So minus three D squared and B is four plus three D power one four squared, increase the power, and four will go up to four cubed to give you the 64 at the end, like that. So the first and last term are good. You need to check your middle terms. So check this one and this one, and then check your last term there. And if they're equal, then you're good. Then you can say it's a perfect cube there. So you're going to have three fours are uh, 12. Good. D squared, D squared. That's good. Four squared is 16. Three times 16 is 48. That's good. And D power one is D. So that's good. So that means now you can write your final answer as D minus four all cubed. And that's your finished answer. So we'll stop there, but tomorrow we'll continue and we'll go through all of these tomorrow. So don't do any now, don't need to, um, but work on your worksheet. I want that on Saturday evening, okay? So, and that's a review of stuff you've been doing.